You are going to listen to a telephone conversation between two people, Hannah and her father. As you can see, there are four alternative answers, A, B, C, and D, for each question, one to five. You have to decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the appropriate letter. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now the test will begin. Remember, you will hear the recording only once, so answer the questions as you listen. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions one to five. Hello, double nine two eight four six. Dad, is that you? Anna. Dad, I'm phoning. The line isn't very clear. Yes, I know. I'm on a mobile and the signal isn't very good. I'll see if I can move. Is that any better? Yes, that's much better. Just、uh, don't move. I'll try not to. Have you found a place to live yet? Yes, I think I have at last. Wonderful. I'm relieved because I'm fed up looking. I didn't think it was going to take me three weeks. It hasn't been easy for you. I suppose it's the beginning of the academic year, and you have all the new students looking for places as well. Yes, that's one reason. But this place is also full of new technology companies, and there are lots of young people looking for somewhere to live. And you know what that means? Higher rents as well. Yes, much higher. Well, tell me. How much is it? It isn't cheap for this area. It's four hundred pounds a month. That's much more than you had expected. Yes, it is. But I can't face looking any more. I want a place where I can put my things instead of living out of a suitcase. I don't want to stay in this hotel any longer. I guess not. So, what's the new place like? Oh, it's really, really nice. Oh, good. It's in a very quiet street. It's a second-floor flat with one double bedroom, a large living room, kitchen and toilet and bathroom. Sounds very nice. Oh, it is. And guess what? Yes. It's got a small roof terrace looking onto the garden at the back. Great. And it's big enough to have my plants and a small table and chairs. Brilliant. Before the speakers continue their conversation, look at questions six to ten. As you listen to the second part of the conversation, complete the numbered spaces six to ten. For questions eight to ten, write no more than three words for each answer. Now,、uh, what's the address? It's twenty-two B White Hart Road. Twenty-two E. No, twenty-two B B for banana. Right. And it's White Hart Road. Yes. And the postcode? Ah,、oh, you know, I don't think I've got it. Okay. No, here it is. It's E X fifteen nine R J. This line is bad. Is that E X fifty? No, it's E X fifteen. Okay.、Uh, I don't think I know the road. It's a side road. 
But you do know the area because it's off Garrett Lane. Oh right,、uh, which end? The other end from the stadium. So it won't be too noisy then. You can still hear it from here when there's a match on. Hmm. When are we going to see you? Well, I was going to come down on Friday evening after work, and then we could bring my things by van on Saturday afternoon. I want to move all of my stuff out to give you and Mum more space. We'll need to hire a van then. It's okay. I'll pay for it. No, no, don't worry. It'll be a gift from your mum and me. Oh, Dad, it's okay. I no, I won't hear of it. We'll pay. All right. Thanks, Dad. And if you're taking everything, we might need to hire a container lorry. <laughs> oh, Dad. I'm only joking. <laughs> I know. I'll hire the van for the Saturday then. I can pick it up first thing in the morning. Right. And then return it in the evening. Are you sure you don't want to stay overnight? No, I'd best get back the same day. You know what your mum's like. She'll only worry. If I remember rightly, it's about three hours by road. Yes, roughly. Well, if we leave by lunchtime, we'll be there mid-afternoon. Okay. Then a couple of hours to unpack. Then. We could go to a nice restaurant round the corner. Definitely, my treat. <laughs> You're on, but I'll have to be away by about seven thirty-ish. Okay. Right then. Um, Mum wants to have a word. I'll see you Friday. Bye, Dad. I'll hand you over to her.、Uh, bye. That's the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You are going to hear a guide named Matt, who is introducing their trip in Wildlife Haven. Now you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen to the first part of the introduction carefully, and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Matt, and I'm one of the three guides here at Wildlife Haven. Our job is to make sure that you all have a great time here with us and go home feeling happy and relaxed. As you can see, we're away from the city in a remote area between a national park and the sea. To encourage you to relax. There are no radios or TVs, and the only phones and newspapers are in the office. So, if peace and quiet is what you've come for, this is the place to be. From your cabin on the hill, you'll find you have the national park behind you, and you can look out from the sea from your front balcony. Your luggage will be unloaded from the bus and taken to your rooms in a few minutes. Once you have picked up your key at reception, please locate your room and check that all your luggage has arrived. The daily program here at Wildlife Haven is flexible, and only as demanding as you want it to be. You should each have a brochure setting out the facilities and various walking tracks you can take. And on the bus, you are given a green sheet setting out a number of group tours in the coming week. If you want to join any tour, just write your name and room number on the relevant sheet along the wall here. Tomorrow, there is a beachcombers and rockhoppers tour. Exploring marine life in the rock pools along the beach, or if you'd prefer to go inland, there's a guided forest walk that takes you off the walking tracks. If you want to catch some lunch, you could join the beach fishing expedition. And at night, you'll see there is a moonlight forest walk that leaves each night at 7 p.m. So there is plenty to choose from at Wildlife Haven, and of course, 
That includes just sitting on your balcony watching the waves roll in. But I would recommend my favorite tour, the Waterfall Walk. This departs at sundown each day and also provides the opportunity to have a moonlight swim. Now you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. In the second part of the introduction, you are going to get some advice from Matt. Listen carefully and answer questions 16 to 20. You've chosen to visit us in January, which is one of our hotter months. And although you may be tempted to wear a minimum of clothing, you should always take precautions against injury, particularly in the National Park. This includes sensible footwear. You'd be surprised how many of our guests ignore this advice and end up being sorry. And socks are a good idea, too. And even though you might be under trees a lot of the time, it's a good idea to wear a hat in this hot climate. There's no need to be too concerned about walking in the National Park, provided you use common sense. It's true that there are poisonous spiders in the park, but they are really more frightened of you than you are likely to be of them. I should also warn you against eating any wild berries. Some are edible, but you should avoid them all. We'll provide all the food you can eat. Well, that's about all for now. Dinner is from 6 to 8 p.m. in this building. This is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You are going to hear a conversation between Bill and the counselor. You now have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen to the conversation carefully and answer questions 21 to 25 by circling the correct letter A, B, or C. Hello, Bill. What can I help you with? Well, I was talking with a friend of mine who's doing a medical course, and he said that before I start taking sleeping pills, I should see you. I see. Well, I can't prescribe any medicine, Bill, and I prefer not to encourage anybody to take sleeping pills. What I can do is to help you look at why you're not sleeping. OK, but I think it's because I don't know how to handle all the work. I found that new students find college very different to school. The biggest difference seems to be that you have to get used to working more independently at college. And this can be difficult to pick up straight away. You can feel that you're not quite in control of it all. That's right. I mean... With only a few lectures and tutorials each week, it looks like an easy workload, but then you suddenly realise that there are assignments, tests and exams. I know I'm not the only one. I really prefer to work quietly in the library where the resources are, but its hours just don't suit my work and sleep habits. Yes. Having a lot of time to manage and having to arrange to get everything done and still have time left over to relax and feel refreshed usually it needs careful planning. Yeah, that's right. I know. But it's hard to get started. My medical mate said you can help with getting organised, and I sure need it. OK, then. 
I need to get a few details about your timetable and any other commitments. You can put them all down on this form if you like. Now you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Listen to the second part of the conversation and answer questions 26 to 30 by completing the notes below. Write no more than three words for each answer. Now, Bill, what's your main concern? Well, what really gets me down at present is that the exams are coming up and I don't feel confident. I know you've spent a lot of time preparing, so let's look at the actual exam itself. No matter how much preparation you do, it doesn't really count if you don't plan how you will time yourself to ensure you get to answer all the questions. Usually there will be some guide on the exam paper that will tell you the relative importance of each question, its contribution to your total mark. I see. So if I feel organised at the start, I can be more confident. Exactly. So once you've worked out an overall plan, and this can be done quickly, you need to make sure you know what each question is asking you to do. As a marker, I know what answers I expect to a question. Then you need to address the question, not just write down what you know and hope the marker will appreciate the hard study you've done. Yes, that's important. I can see that markers are looking at the questions, not trying to guess what we know. Yes. And the third point to keep in mind is that even if you know the topic well, you should leave time to go back and check your work for content. There may be an important point you have missed, or not explained as much as you wanted to. And at the same time, you can look for errors, including any obvious ones in grammar. OK, thanks. It's really simple in many ways, isn't it? This is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 4. Section 4. You will hear a talk given by Kate Tomalin on the history of technology. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 33. Now, listen carefully to the talk and answer questions 31 to 33. Our talk today in this History of Technology series is about a feat of anti-engineering from the late 19th and early 20th century that is still very much with us today and that is linked with the history of the typewriter. It's the QWERTY keyboard. What you might ask is QWERTY. Well, have a look at the nearest typewriter or computer keyboard. If you look at the top row, you will see that Q, W, E, R, T, Y are the first six letters. Did you ever think when you were learning to type about why the letters on the keyboard are distributed the way they are? Here's the story. It all has to do with the history of the typewriter. Typewriters existed since the early 1700s, but the first commercially practical system came into being in 1873. The typewriter is one of America's greatest unsung inventions. While the telephone, automobile, and airplane sped up communications and transportation, the typewriter did the same thing for the written word. 
but few people paid much attention, possibly because they were too busy reading what the typewriter had written about all the other inventions. The first typewriters had the keys laid out in alphabetical order, but this system had problems. Some keys that tended to be typed together were physically close. This made the type bars hit each other and get stuck. Typewriters in 1873 jammed or got stuck if the keys next to each other were hit in quick succession. To solve this problem, in 1878, the QWERTY keyboard was developed, spacing frequent letters away from each other and therefore reducing the number of jams. It was not specifically designed to slow down typists, as is generally believed, but the keyboard did create a built-in inefficiency for typists. The most common keys are scattered all over the keyboard rows, many on the left side. Right-handed people have to use their left hand, which is the weaker hand. Typewriter technology improved, doing away with the original rationale for the QWERTY distribution, but the keyboard remained. In spite of its inefficiency, it is the keyboard we all use today. Now you have some time to look at questions thirty-four to forty. Now listen and answer questions thirty-four to forty. Already back in nineteen thirty-two, there was a solution to the problem. Efficiency expert August Dvorak came up with a new keyboard layout. His home row consisted of A O E U I D H T N S. Which includes all of the vowels as well as the most commonly used letters. On this keyboard, over three thousand words can be typed using only the home row. In fact, seventy percent of all the work can be done on the home row, twenty-two percent on the row above, and eight percent on the row below. The QWERTY keyboard allows only about fifty words to be typed without reaching for other rows. In addition, on Dvorak's keyboard, the right hand handles 56% of the workload, and the left handles 44%, just about the opposite of the division of the QWERTY keyboard. This is an advantage for most right-handers. The Dvorak keyboard increased accuracy in typing by almost 50%, and speed by 15 to 20%. How much labor did this Dvorak layout save? In one study, a group of typists was evaluated in the use of both keyboards. Those using the Dvorak keyboard moved their fingers just about one mile on an average day, while those who used the QWERTY keyboard moved their fingers an average of twelve to twenty miles. The superiority of the Dvorak keyboard was clearly established. However, it has never been adopted as the keyboard of choice. Why? First of all, bad luck and bad timing on the part of the Dvorak team. First, there was the depression. Not a good time for introducing change. But the main factor that worked against the Dvorak system was habit. People were used to the QWERTY keyboard. Computers today could easily switch the arrangement of letters to the Dvorak layout, but it seemed that because of habit, the QWERTY layout remains dominant. People felt comfortable with the keyboard they learned on, so it was the established patterns of hundreds of millions of typists, manufacturers, typing teachers, and typewriter salespeople that have crushed all moves toward keyboard efficiency for over seventy years. It looks like QWERTY keyboard may be with us for a long time yet. That is the end of section four. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers.